Oh, that's a little prim. Oh my god. Get him back in the water. Wrong way, buddy. Go that way. Fish. Oh! Excuse me, mate. I've got to go around you. Not a care in the world, eh? Hey? G'day. My name is Luke, and this is my wife, Jen. And here are our two growing boys, Liam and Elliot. We've been fishing, boating, and exploring the pristine waters of the Fraser Coast for about 10 years now. So subscribe and come join the adventure. G'day folks, Luke Fitzpatrick here. Thank you so much for watching. Well, we've managed to sneak out Monday morning for a quick fish. Uh, I tell you what, I'm really enjoying getting back into the fishing. Um, what I'm doing today is I'm on the hunt for flathead for dinner. I just want one or two sort of that 50, 55 sort of size uh, to take home and feed the family tonight, hopefully. So that's the goal. What I'm doing is uh, what I've done a lot in the past. Um, you can see over there a very obvious uh, drain. We're about an hour short of low tide. Uh, so the water is moving this way out of the straits and that example of a drain there are lots of drains exactly like that all the way up uh, all the way down sorry and up uh, Fraser Island on the western side so what I'm going to do uh, is just walk you through exactly how I approach fishing each drain I'm going to start with the little semi hards vibe uh, I've got a soft plastic um, uh, the prong, so a prawn sort of imitation. I've got a paddle tail soft plastic, and then I've got another prawn imitation soft plastic as well. And all I'm going to do is go to the front of each drain, spend about 10 minutes at each one, fish the edges, look for any obvious ambush points, anywhere where there's a bit of structure, just quickly have a cast with each lure into there, uh, see if there's a fish. If there's not, move to the next drain. And the tide's dropping, so I'm going to fish up until the point where the tide turns and when this tide starts coming back in i'm just going to come back to the same drains and work myself uh, work myself back to where i started um, that way i should be able to have a bit of a cast while the tide's coming out and a bit of a cast while the tide's going in just to see if that makes any difference to where the fish are positioning themselves so that's the plan for today um, hopefully flathead for dinner Hopefully it's not like uh, that video I posted a little while ago where I get really, really frustrated. Hope we don't want that to happen. So, good vibes. A rather brisk morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it was about four degrees when I woke up this morning. It's July, July 2021. Water temperature is about 17 and a half degrees, 18 degrees at the moment up here on the flats. So, one of the big questions is, are the fish stationing themselves in the deeper water in a, in a nice comfy patch down there, a nice thermocline where they're nice and warm before they move up onto the flats as the tide pushes in uh, and then warming themselves in the sun up on the flats or are they already way up there and comfy and don't really care. So what I'm doing is I'm starting on the edge in the deep water and you can see the different colour, the brown that goes to that sort of clear smoother water there that's the edge that enters the channel so i'm starting it at the deeper and i'm working my way into each of the drains i'm also casting the semi hards lure first and i'm just doing a, a simple hop retrieve so once it gets to the bottom wind up the slack hop it let it rest again on the bottom uh, just like you would a soft plastic very very simple um, and I'm using the vibe because you might notice over here, um, it's probably going to be a bit hard to, to tell on the camera, but this side is dirty, this side is clear. Uh, tide is going out that way. And we've had quite a lot of rain here on the Fraser Coast over the last week or so. So quite a lot of that fresh water is still pushing out. I'm using the vibe because I'm casting into both areas and I'm hoping the, the rattle or the vibration on this lure um, will allow the fish in the dirty water to find it a and obviously they'll see it and hear it hopefully in the clear. Um, then I'll switch to the soft plastic, the probably the prong next, and that'll still make a vibration but it's a lot more subtle 
because um, that might be the difference. It might be a loud vibration or a soft vibration that actually gets the fish's attention or wakes them up or whatever this morning. So that's the plan. Deeper water into the shallow, hit any obvious ambush points, take note of the colour of the water and all that sort of stuff, and then move to the next one if we don't find any fish. Okay, no joy with the vibe. Switching to the prong, there's a turtle just down there. Uh, I haven't seen any stingrays. Usually I like to see stingrays in an area. I usually find flathead and stingrays together. One turtle there, one there, the smaller models. That's in any of the big ones. So there's obviously something here to attract the turtles in. Um, but it might be a case of no fish at this strain. Uh, single hop again. Actually, I'm sort of shaking it. It's on the bottom, shake, shake. And lift at the same time. Um, could be a case of there's just no fish stationed here at this particular time of the tide. They could be out deeper. I don't know. So I'll move to the next drain very shortly. Um, give this five or six casts just in this area and move on. And I think that's a really important thing. I see a lot of people who anchor up in one spot and they don't move all day and then you see them at the ramp and they haven't caught anything. Um, and I sort of suggest to them maybe move around just a little bit. Now one thing I've got to remember now that I've put this on, it is the it is lighter and more subtle, so I've got to slow down. And I try and explain this to Liam, my eldest son. It's actually I find it really hard sometimes to slow down when I'm fishing. Um, and I was using that vibe quite aggressively. A few taps up there. It doesn't feel like flatted. I think there might be some little bait fish up there. Um, but slowing down sometimes and letting that lure just sit uh, sometimes is a good strategy. So we've moved up to our second drain. This one's a little bit less obvious where the entrance is. I just, I just know because I've been here so many times at different times of the tide. You can actually see it way up in the distance there. It hooks right around. The entrance is just up in here. Um, slightly different tack of this one because it's um, it's a lot shallower. So I'm actually coming at it from a slight angle. I'm just going to go past it with the electric motor and just pepper it as I go past. Electric motor off, drift back, do it again with a, a different lure. Again, 10, 15 minutes and then move to the next one. I've had a couple of little inquiries on the soft plastic, but I think they're like little bar tail. Not quite sure, I haven't hooked one. Um, and that's it so far. So, family might be going hungry the way we're going. Here's hoping we can find something. There it is now, you can see it. It sort of spills out onto that, um, all that sand up there. So it's a bit harder to get close to the mouth of this one. Usually I like to fish this one, usually uh, after low tide, about two hours after low, when the water's pushing back into it. But persistence is key today. Change lures, keep persisting, and see how we go. I just spooked a flathead right there next to the boat. I can't believe it. I must have cast over him two or three times as I was moving up. He was a good size one too, probably high 40s. He just took off straight up into the shallows there. Oh, they can be frustrating sometimes. Okay, no luck on the vibe. So I'm now going to the Soft plastic, I got the prong first and then I'll put in the paddle tail. Wish I hadn't have spooked that fish. So annoying. <laughs> anyway, that's fishing. So there's a couple of things I've noticed straight away different from the previous drain. Um, first thing is I've, I've seen a couple of stingrays mooching around in the shallows. You can remember when I was down at that first drain, I said I usually find the stingrays and the flathead in the same areas, which is a good sign. The other thing is I've noticed there's very small scattered little uh, bait fish getting around. Um, not in huge numbers, which I'd love to see huge numbers of them, but they're definitely here, whereas I didn't see that at the previous drains. And I'm getting a lot of little taps on the soft plastic. You probably, I probably can't feel them as well on the vibe. 
soft plastic. I've just got this is an all round lighter outfit, for it. so it's a three to ten pound rod, seven foot, um, five pound braid, ten pound leader, um, quarter ounce jig head with the little prong on it, so it's a lot lighter than that other setup, which is a ten to twelve pound. Um, so I can just feel more of this one, and that's probably why I'm picking up these little bites. Not really bites, more just nibbles. So I'll persist here for a few more minutes than what I normally would. Um, just because conditions are looking a bit better. But maybe as I push further south, maybe the conditions will just get better. Um, we're not quite at low tide yet, so... Once that run-in starts, uh, things could change as well. Lots of these little taps. He's come off. Oh no, he's still there. Finally managed to hook one of these tiny little things. I'm thinking it's a bar tail. Oh no, that's a little brim. Oh my god. It's a bit different. Okay. Tiny brimmy brim. A little brim on the prong. Caught us a little fish. Very little fish. I wonder if that'll win a competition. <laughs> but uh, okay, so there's some brim at the mouth of this one. Be worth another couple of casts, I think. Gorgeous fish. Absolutely gorgeous. Get him back in the water. Wrong way, buddy. Go that way. There he is. Bit of a sulk for a few seconds and then he'll be off. Another drain. Tide is just about to turn. So I'll probably do this one and one more, depending on what I find. I haven't found any fish yet. Well, I found the brim, but Family's starving at this stage. Keep persevering. All right, not sure what we got here, folks. Hey. I'll show you. First, let's get the fish in. Stop talking. Concentrate on getting the fish because fish are few and ha far between today, Luke. Then I'll show you the lure and how I've got it rigged because I've completely changed my setup. I was starting to get desperate, getting frustrated. So now the fish is trying to get out of the water. He's trying to get his head up. Shake that lure free. Beautiful fish. Oh! The family is not going to starve. Hurrah! Okay. Oh, that's a good size flathead. So I'll just put that down there for a sec. I'm going to show you it's spat the lure. Now I seem to spat them just as I get to the boat. All right, check this out. Now I can't remember the name of the jig head. I'm going to have to, when I get back to the office, I'll tell you about it. That is the setup. So that's a Z-Man four inch paddle tail, old school four inch paddle tail. Okay, beautiful color. Is this one on? It is. I'll show it on this as well. And what I've done is this is a through body weight. So I'll try and open it up so you can see. It comes through the body like that. Okay. And then 
the treble, or not trebles, the doubles sit underneath. So when that swims along, the hooks tuck up like this, and tail's still got plenty of wiggle room, quarter ounce jig on the front, and away she swims. I'll show you a better image of it when I get when I get home. Remind me to do that. Um, and I'll give you the name and everything of the jig head. But this is the first time I've used it. I wanted to give it a go and well, stop the vibe, stop the prong, and that got it for some reason. Now, let's talk about the fish. All right. So I'm not worried about keeping this fish out of the water because it is coming home for dinner. Uh, beautiful. I'll give her a quick measure so you can see the size, but I'm thinking 50s, mid 50s. Grippers, you got kids and you're trying to teach them to fish, definitely get them a set of these. You will save your fingers. Come on. 55. I reckon if I, if I wanted to really debate, I'd say 56. But 55 will do. I reckon you could actually troll this quite well as I think it um I think that would troll really really nicely anyway um tide has turned so uh I've given this a good 10 minutes I didn't get another touch so I had a couple of little taps I, I don't know whether they brim or something again um I was a bit surprised not to get another another flathead but that's the brakes so now I'm going to, I'm just going to cast around this drain entrance. Oh, something just spooked in there. Arr. Um, a couple more casts here, and then I'm going to uh, go back and pretty much hit all the exact same drains that I've hit so far this morning, just at a different time. All right, so. I think it's probably unfair to say that it is the lure alone that has result like the change to this type of lure that has resulted in that fish um, because there's a lot of variables that have changed all around the same time and, and a lot of them I can't control so first one that did change is the lure right so we've changed profile so shape and size of lure uh, the other thing that's happened is we're later in the day, the water temperature has risen. So if you remember back there, it was 17 and a half. Here it's 19.6 according to the, the hummingbird. Um, so that's changed. We're later in the day and the sun's a lot higher um, and the tide has turned. So we've got about half an hour of the tide has now started to push in. So there's quite a few variables there. I'm just trying to get myself out of this little shallow patch. Um, so personally, what I said a bit earlier in the day when we were further up there, um, I said that I think it'll come down to later in the day, water temperature rising, the sun getting higher and the fish coming out of the deep into the shallow to sort of warm themselves up, be a bit more comfortable. I think that's what's happened. Um, and I think the profile and everything of the lure has has helped um but i think the just the, the climate environmental conditions is what really has thought about that fish i think that's my theory I'm sticking to it so just using the electric to get me out of this drain came in a bit shallower than what i intended <laughs> seems to happen a lot Strawberries and crackers for lunch. Oh, love it. And uh, we'll go check one more drain and then uh, that'll be us for the day. He's hoping we can find a second fish. Stuff yeah, coming today. Uh, I tried to take a shot of the of this drain with the drone this morning. Having a few dramas with my drone. Battery issues. Um, turtle. Uh, so hopefully I can show you the image of it, but it is completely changed. Uh, I'll show you the head cam footage, but the drone footage will really highlight it. I'm going to start with this one now that I'm back here, just because I've had success with it today. 
Um, water temperature has changed here as well. It's at 19.1, that's what the hummingbird's saying. Now this drains a slightly different setup. So for this one, I'm actually gonna just, I can see a turtle moving through that drain a bit further up there. I'm actually just gonna move straight in. It's very, very shallow. You can see lots of bait in here. Um, so we're in sort of 80 centimeters of water at the moment. And once I get in, so this morning I was fishing 20 or 30 meters back that way and this was dry. Uh, big turtle there. And the mouth I couldn't quite get to because it was so shallow. But now I'm going to push right up onto it. You can see the actual creek drain way up there in the distance. So now I'm just going to push in and cast at any dark patches, sand patches, anything like that I see along the way. I'm, I'm lucky that I've got the sun's out so I can actually see the shadow of the deeper water as it winds in so I can see the drain. I'm just going to follow it in a, a bit, cast away, corners, sand patches, any gravel patches I see, and see if there's any fish that have moved in as the tides come in. And then I'll move to the next one. So this one I'll probably spend 20 minutes at. I don't know how many casts that equates to. Turtles everywhere. They're all over the place. Look at the bow waves they make. Well, they're not massive turtles, but they're... And that's just because they're in such shallow water. Actually, that's a pretty big turtle, that one. Well, he's coming straight for me. He's going, oh, hang on. There's something there making a noise. He spooked something there too. Excuse me, mate, I gotta go around you. Another turtle up there. There's a little one here. I think the little ones are the females, the big ones are the males. Bow wave. I don't wanna cast at the moment because I've got turtles everywhere. How cool. Not a care in the world, eh? Just cruising around. Gorgeous creature. Right, folks, I'm done for the day. Uh, it is a glorious day, look at it. So lucky to live where we live. Um, the one keeper, didn't get the second one, but uh, I can live with that. That's fishing. I uh, got the brim, which was interesting, but it was a pretty tough day's fishing, actually. So, um, I haven't fished up on the flats like this for flathead like that for quite a while, so interesting. A couple of things I did notice. Take note of, during the video we talked about water temperature. Um, so once that water temperature nudged up a bit, that's where we, uh, we nailed the fish. Uh, water clarity, um, where the water was a little bit murky and not so real, real, I mean it was so clear in some of these drains. It was like looking through glass. So a little bit of mucky water seemed to help. Uh, stingrays, where I found stingrays and bait, there were turtles everywhere, but stingrays and bait, that seemed to help as well. Um, and I guess lure choice, change of lure, profile, shape, all that sort of stuff, you can work that out amongst yourselves, um, whether that played a part. So, thanks for watching, really, really appreciate it, thanks for following along. I'm going to, uh, this video was a little bit longer because I wanted to show a bit more of the fishing because a few people have asked for that. Uh, if there's anything you want to ask or see or anything like that, please just flick us a message. And if you enjoyed this video today, please leave a comment, hit the thumbs up, all that sort of stuff. Subscribe, of course, share it with your mates, all that sort of stuff because uh, we're trying to grow the channel. Okay, got to go back and uh, pick up the kidlets now from school. I wonder if I should take the boat through the pickup zone or whether I should drop it off first. We'll see how we go on the run back. Thanks again, folks.